Any of you are writers here? Are you planning on writing or write or blog or write lyrics, write anything? Yes? Cool. Okay, good. So I guess I'll tell you a little bit about how I became a writer. That's what you do. Um, I uh, was born in Pennsylvania in a small little town. Um, I was raised by a single mother and we lived in a trailer and we didn't have much money at all. So um, I used to check out in kindergarten, I used to check out where the wild things are every week from the library. Every single week I love that book. Do you, are you familiar with that book? Yeah. yeah. So I was obsessed. Um, and at the end of the year, the librarian gave me the book as a gift. And I felt like, wow, she singled me out. I felt so special and because um, I was the only one she gave the book to. And, and so I went home and I put masking tape over the words. And I had, you know, memorized the book by then. So I started making up my own stories to Marie Sendak's pictures. And that's kind of my first memory of storytelling, of, of me making up stories. And I still have that book on my shelf, and when I have kind of writer's block, I pull it out and I make up some stories to his illustrations. There's still the masking tape on that book. Um, so that's pretty much my first memory of, of writing. Um, I really didn't think I would be a writer, because in my town, you were either a nurse or a teacher, um, and that was that was what, what you were. And, my grandfather was like, what do you mean you're, you're going to be a writer? What is that? You know, what, <laughs> do you get a pension? It's like, you know, no. He was a coal miner, so it was all about the pension. Um, but I really, I studied music. I played the drum since I was eight years old. I came up here to really be a musician. Um, I studied music in college, and I, was, I would write lyrics. That's where, really, my writing started, I would write lyrics, um, which some of you said that you did, right? Yeah. Um, so that's writing. Um, <laughs> and um, when I moved up here, I really wanted to be in the music industry, so I got a job at a record company cleaning toilets, um, because I just didn't care. I just wanted to be in the record company, you know, in, around these people, around these artists. And um, so I cleaned toilets for a while, and then I got a job. Um, being a, a public relations, a PR person, for all these bands that I listened to in high school. And it was crazy for me um, to meet these people that I, I like worshipped, pretty much. Um, I worked for Prince for a while, and I worked for um, Depeche Mode and The Cure, and a lot of people that are in my books. And, and then I started working for the Olsen Twins because they had a music, little music video. Um, and then as I was working for the Olsen Twins, I kind of started writing and directing my own films on the side, um, just for something. Um, and, and they got wind of it. And I, I, one showed on PBS and one showed on IFC. Um, and the twins were um, teenagers at this time, and they're like, Hey, we don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be toothpaste anymore. We want something a little cooler, <laughs> and so they brought me in uh, full time to kind of create their brand, um, their video games, and their TV shows, um, and all of that. And so I got I became very obsessed with the whole idea of fame. Working for them, um, out on the, uh, I worked on the. Universal um, lot for a while, and I was like, "Oh, um, there's all these famous people, all these young famous people, and everybody wants to be like them. And everybody's like, what are they wearing? I'm gonna get that. What are they? you know? Everything was about, you know, they were perfect, and they were probably the most unhappy people that I'd ever seen. And so it got me thinking about the whole idea of fitting in and invisibility. And I was like, wow, Hollywood." is a lot like high school. You know, you're trying to fit in. People think you're something that you're probably not. It's all about perception. And you can't really be yourself, because everyone's trying to be this perfect image of themselves. But you're stuck with these same people every day. 
day in and day out the same people. So, um, so that's how I got to write Ghost Girl, because Ghost Girl is about feeling invisible and not, uh, wanting to fit in. Um, she's actually, I think, you, did you all get a copy of the book? Yes. Yeah, she, she dies on the first day of school, basically. She chokes to death on a gummy bear. Um, she's a choker. She really never goes after what she wants in life. And, um, and she, that doesn't stop her, though. God, death doesn't stop her. She's still determined, despite the fact that she is no longer living, to obtain popularity and get the guy. So that's really the basis of, of the story, and it's pretty dark. <laughs> but it's also pretty funny, I think. Um, so there's a lot of humor mixed with the dark. And I feel like the darker the book, the kind of brighter the light. So I, I really love to take readers on those really dark, this is, I guess, where Poe comes in, not the humor part, but to take readers to these really dark corners and places and and uh, show them, you know, and, and show them kind of what, you know, the light is at the end, um, so to speak. So this, um, actually, I wrote as a feature film script first. Um, Robert De Niro's company, Tribeca, optioned it, and they were taking it around to studios, and they, I was in a meeting with um, the head of a very famous studio, and he said, well, we really love the book. We love it, we love it, we love the story, we're going to make it. And I, he was like, but there's one small thing you have to change. And I'm like, okay, you know what, her name, or you know, what's the small thing? And they said, she can't die. And I was like, oh, well, that's, then you don't like the story because that is the story. So <laughs> I, I just kind of stuck to my guns and I was like, I can't change that part. I just, I would love a movie deal, of course, but I, that's just something I can't change. Um, so I tried my hand at writing it in book form. I've never, never done it before. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and it turned out to be a trilogy and it's in 30 different countries and now I'm on my second book series, um, which is The Blessed. I have some giveaway stuff here, um, Precious Blood and um, Passionaries, it's a trilogy. Um, the last one is coming out, but anyway, that's the thing. You can't, you can't give up. If you believe in something, you you do whatever you can to hold on to what it is, what makes it what it is, what makes it real um, to you. And um, everyone will have a story um, when the day is done. Margaret Atwood said <laughs> said that. Um, so stick to your story. That's my advice. Um, I'm going to show the Ghost Girl trailer to you. Um, you guys familiar with book trailers? Do you watch them online? No? Okay, I'll show you the Ghost Girl book trailer. I'm also, I, since I come from filmmaking a little bit, I like to make my own trailers. So um, I'll show you the Ghost Girl one right now. Just pressing, just punching Ghost Girl. And whatever your favorite books are, or your authors, or you're interested in, go online and see if they have a book trailer. Because some are really good. wrote the song for this too, so don't judge me, but I really love writing words. Thank you. 
Girl Lovesick. And there are two books, Ghost Girl, um, Day of the Dead, and Ghost Girl, um, Christmas Spirit, It's a Wonderful Afterlife. Um, but those two are um, ebook in English and then in Spanish. Um, these books are really big in, in Mexico and Latin America, places like that. So um, I, I'll talk a little bit about my Blessed series, and then I'll show the trailers for those if you want to see them. And then we'll open it up to questions if that's okay. Um, the, the book trilogy that I'm going to talk about now is called The Blessed. Um, it's about three girls who are really down on the skids. One's a struggling musician, which I took a lot of um, my own experience when I came to New York and tried to make it as a musician. Um, a lot of that is in there. Um, and then I have um, her, the character's name is Cecilia. She's the patron saint of music. Um, so this is a retelling of ancient martyr tales, because I think young adult um, YA, these may be the first YA kind of tales that we have, because all of these girls were in 13 when they decided to kind of, you know, stand up for what they believed in. And um, I, I, found, I, I felt like I'm going to do like the Quentin Tarantino version of these girls and really make them badass. Um, so Cecilia is the musician. Um, and then Lucy is the it girl, and I took a lot. She's all about fame, and and uh, she's the patron saint of sight. So it's all about the looks and and all of that. And then there's Agnes, who's um, the hopeless romantic. She's the patron saint of, of young love. So um, I kind of put them in modern day Brooklyn, and there's evil going around, um, an evil takeover, and they're kind of they have to really kick ass and. And, and it's, it's really about not saving, not looking to someone else to save you, but about saving yourself, having faith, but having faith in yourself. Um, so I kind of twisted it around a little bit. Um, they aren't religious books, but they're, um, I kind of skirt around those religious issues, but make them more about you and how you can, you have the strength and the power. Um, so that's, that's um, those books. And I will show the first trailer. This, the first trailer is um, it's really pleasant. And I really love making trailers. <laughs> Ghost Girl is um, in the middle of being optioned for film, so um, we'll see what happens there. It doesn't mean it's going to get made, but it means that someone has the chance to make it, so hopefully.
anyway, you can see the three different characters and kind of what they're about a little bit. Um, Worst time, so. 
Yes? Um, why did you make it such a struggle for her Um, why did I make it such a struggle for her to become popular? Um, because it is a struggle, I think. Right? Yeah, for some people. And there's there's characters in the book that really have it easy, um, that are popular. And you see kind of that even they can't be themselves. Um, she's trying to be someone she's not. They're trying to be someone they're not. So everyone's you know, trying to be something else. Um. I want to go over here for a second. Yes. Um, like, the book talk is so interesting. Did you do it yourself or, like, somebody else? Um, the, well, the book cover, um, Little Brown, um, the, the book is done by Little Brown. I did have the artwork and everything on my website before I went out with the book, because um, this is something I've worked on for years before it became a book. So yeah, I had a hand in that. But they really <laughs> went all out.
you know, sell the book to a certain age group or, or what have you, you're not going to have the authentic story that you want to tell. I, 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 I wrote this book and my publisher is the one that told me what the age group was. I didn't really, um, I know some people set out to write for certain ages, but I, I, I can't do that, so. Yes? Um, why did you organize the book the way that you did? With the quotes and the yes. song lyrics? Um, yeah, I, 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 I had the song lyrics because I listen to music while I'm, I write, at least the first draft. And I had them written down. And then I had those little like self-help paragraphs um, talking directly to the reader, like a silent movie kind of thing. And I, I, those were kind of the themes of the chapters. And at the end of me writing, I was so that would be something I would just discard. But at the end of my writing process, I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep these in there. Again, I was just starting out. I didn't know what was OK and what wasn't. And Little Brown said, okay, you get the clearances for the lyrics, and we'll put them in. So um, coming from the music industry, I got the clearance. And, and uh, because, like I said, music is a huge part of my life, and it's a huge part of my books, all of my books. So yeah, good question. Yes? <laughs> Why doesn't Charlotte seek revenge? That's a good one. Um, she wants to be her so bad. Um, that's why. Her sister, Scarlett, seeks revenge, but um, in late, definitely in later books. But um, Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte just, Mitchell can do no wrong. So. <laughs> yes? Why is it when, um, when Charlotte would take over Scarlett's body, why is it? that Charlotte would try to act more like Scarlett so she wouldn't confuse Damon. So she would what? So she wouldn't confuse Damon. Oh, why didn't she try to act more like Scarlett? Yeah, why um, because she wasn't Scarlett. No matter how much she tried, she was not cool. Like, even in her body, she just, that wasn't who she was. Um, she was being something that she wasn't, and everyone could see through that. So, guys, read the book. Yes? Um, me? Yes. <laughs> Why are you going to do it like in like a teen drama kind of like Teen drama, like a soap opera kind of thing? Or like Vampire Diaries kind of thing? I've never read it. Okay. Like, I don't know, like the Blue for High books? Why you, I can't. Um, I, 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 you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to tell a story, and this is kind of the way I. That's my, it's my writing style and, and how I felt. And I came from television and film, film, and my books read, it was a script, and my books read a lot like, they're, they're very visual books, I think, so. And I'm not good at that soap opera kind of writing. I wish I were, because they're huge, but I'm not. Yes? I'm sorry? Yes, I'm working on the last uh, book of the Blessed, which is called Hallowed, and it'll be out in the spring. And then I have two other books I'm kind of working on, kicking around. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just like that aesthetic. I I write dark stories. I um, I always have. I've always been dark, dark child. Um, but like I said, that's really where you see the light. You know, you really, the darker the story, the brighter the light, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, um, you laugh because it's so mean in this book, and um, a lot of the characters, the Petula and the Wendy's especially, um, the Wendy's are, they, they're just, they're my favorite to write because they're just ridiculous. Yeah, they're just so ridiculously stupid. Um, they were, they were my favorite. I was like, yay, you know, I get to write the Wendy's. Yes. Um, I will point you in the direction of, they, it might be puppets, so if you want to be a puppet, if you want to be stop, stop motion, I don't know. 
<laughs> yes. Sorry? The quotes? The um, quotes. Those were song lyrics and kind of my favorite writers. There's Poe's quoted um, in the book. Um, just things that I thought about while I was writing the chapters um, and decided to keep in. Yes? I'm sorry, I can't hear you.
But yeah, I mean that's part of life. And some people are good at handling it, some aren't, but everyone has to handle it. Um, and you have to move past it. You can't, I mean you can let yourself cry for a little bit and then it's like, okay, you gotta pick yourself back up and carry on. Or you know, or it ends. Your, your dream ends. So Yes. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, you say you'd wait for inspiration and then sometimes you'll write all night. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, you could use a specific example about how many drafts you go through, how many versions of the novel before you would then show it okay. to your agent or to who, your editor. Yes. Um, okay, so um, in terms of the book, um, the first one started out as a feature film script that I worked um, with the development person at Tribeca for about a year to kind of um, shape it up. Um, and then from there you do probably about three drafts. Your first draft is just, um, my, my first drafts are horrible. They're just kind of the idea and a general sense of where I want to go and um, yeah, I would never show anyone my first drafts. And then you get notes back from your editor, and, and they they tell you, oh well, you know, try try to kind of try to use this more, delete this, and try this. And so the rewriting process, the first draft is is a, is a load of fun. It's 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 my favorite part because you're just like writing, and no one's stopping you. You don't really care a lot. It's just coming out. And it's an amazing magical process. And, that's why I do what I do, but like the rewrites, <laughs> you know, when you get your editor's notes, it, it can be very tough to go back and scrape away at, at things and delete scenes that you might really like, but they don't fit and, and, and stuff like that. And then the third draft is a little bit more of that. It's less painful because you're almost there. Um, and then you go into copy editing, so. which is, you know, you, you left this word out. Yes. Um, what is the salary of a writer? The salary of a writer? Um, <laughs> well, it depends if you're Stephanie Meyer or you're, uh, you know. I mean, it's, it's there's like that's like saying what's the salary of a musician? It's kind of like you can play at the local club and make a living, or you can be, you know, Rihanna. You know what I mean? It's there's not really a set salary. It just depends. Yeah. Yes. How long did it take your book to get published? How long did, I, did it take for my book to get published? Um, I think uh, eight years. <laughs> yeah, like when I say don't give up, that's I mean it, don't give up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. But that's, that's why I'm trying to emphasize sticking with it no matter what. Really. I mean, I had so many doors shut in my face. It was... Anyone else? Yes. Um, was there any ever alternate versions of the book you consider, like, you know, not how it turned out, like, different than you or something? Um, there was an alternate beginning to the book, which I have in the film script. Um, but ending... I really didn't. I knew kind of where I wanted to end up, but I kind of wrote my way through the book, um, and the, the the ending was pretty organic. And so yeah, it's well, the what same was, ending. What was the ultimate beginning? Well, it, because it was a film script, I needed something visual to kind of really quickly tell the story. So she almost gets hit by a car, um, by Petula's car in the beginning of in the movie script. Um, and so, but she doesn't. She lives. So you're like, oh, she doesn't die, you know. But then she does. Yeah. Then she tries. <laughs> so yeah, my books, like I said, are a lot about determination, determination, and sticking to to your dreams, really, no matter what they are. You know, Tonya, this question about the salary is always such an interesting one, the idea that there is a salary for a right. writer, which there isn't. So how did you sustain yourself for eight years 
because everybody should be aware that you don't get paid for a book until you sell the book. Right. Until somebody buys the book and then you only get paid a third of the amount of money. Right. Then when the book, when they, they want the book, you get paid a third of the amount of money. They say, they say, I'll give you $20,000 or $24,000. You get a third of that. Then you deliver the manuscript, you get a third, and then the book is published, and then you get the third. Right. So you get, a, you, you don't ever get one lump sum. But anyway, so how did you, ha, were you well, working I was, all yes, the time? Yes, I was working. I was a publicist. And then I sold the script to Tribeca, um, which sustained me for a while. And I worked on the story for a year. I had some money from them. Um, and then the that my book um, was put up for auction, which is sometimes what they do with publishing houses, and whoever you know pays the most takes it off the table, gets the book. So Little Brown took my book off the table, and um, and then it, again, foreign rights it sold in thirty other countries. So you get a little money for that royalties and advances. Yes. Uh, no, they did a little round, um, but I did have the artwork and stuff on my website, so kind of, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love the visuals. I, like I said, I love the book trailers. And yeah. I did, I, it's sitting behind a desk all the time. It's depressing for me. So. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was a big deal. And if you've seen the Blessed Book, who don't want the Blessed Book? Who has the Blessed Book? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a, a done by an artist, Natalie Shaw in Lithuania, um, and it's a reversible cover. So if you want to turn it around, that's her saint image. Um, so I love, yeah, I love doing doing the kind of visual stuff. Yes. Um, you know, I, I I teeter between stop motion animation, which I studied here at the School of Visual Arts, and um, and live action. I've been, you know, it's been so long that I kind of been both places. Right now, I'm back at stop motion, and I premiered a trailer at Comic Con to kind of kick off the film deal thing. But uh, I would like to do stop motion. I think. But either way, I'd be happy. Maybe one more question. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you find that your book is uh, more demanded in foreign countries than at home? Uh, it is more. Oh yes. Um, like in in Spanish speaking territories, my books are like huge. There. If you go on my face Facebook page, um, the Ghost Girl Facebook page, it's you know it's. It's real, I get a lot of fan art, and there's a lot of excitement. I go to Mexico once a year, I go to Colombia, um, Spain. Uh, there's, it's, it's almost as big as Twilight in those countries. So, if not in some, some it, it's bigger. So, yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with kind of the treatment. They want to know yes. about our high school here, they right. want to know, and then also how I handle death, you know, in, in a kind of humorous kind of way. Um, which they are very used to in, in Mexico. Last question. Am I what? <laughs> what's, what's, what's that? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. My face, Facebook famous. Oh, I never heard of that. Um, how, many, how, many, how many friends do you have to have for Facebook? Okay, yeah, I have like... Um, well, Ghost Girl has almost 400,000 likes. Oh. Is that what that is? So that's a real thing? Are you Facebook famous? I'm so out of it. I gotta get. I gotta. I am on Instagram. Yeah. And Twitter. Does anyone do Twitter or anyone? Yeah. Thank you so much and thank you Sheridan.